itself. So the premiere was last night. And what was it like getting to, to see it with an audience for the first time like that? It was amazing to see it with an audience last night because, you know, sometimes they laugh at certain moments where you weren't expecting them to laugh. And then, you know, just feeling the silence in the room during the more emotional beats of the film was very, very intense. And it was wonderful to just feel them respond to the, to the, the film as in general. You know, you really understood the beats of the story and they were taken away on that journey with us. So I, I was thrilled. That's, it was, I was there and it was amazing to, to hear and feel that kind of, the interest in Lee's story. And it's not that many people know about her, unfortunately, but you have a lot in common with her. Um, you talked about it a bit last night, but that obviously you both kind of cap try to capture truth through a lens in a way, but you've also both kind of um, had your careers in largely male professions too, which is something that I think is, is interesting. But how did you first hear about her story? I know you said that you introduced Kate Winslet to it, but when did you first come upon Lee's story? Um, I knew about Lee Miller because I followed the early photographers and she was a very well-known model at the time. So I've seen her photographs again and again. And of course, I was very much into experimental film and experimental photography. So Man Ray was someone I had looked at. And I was really amazed to discover the story about how solarization came about, which was really due to Lee because she was working in the darkroom. Um, because she decided that instead of being a model that she would step behind the camera and apprentice herself to Man Ray. So she was in the darkroom and a rat or a, a mouse ran over her leg and she flipped on the light and suddenly Man Ray came in and to see what was going on, saw what was happening and threw it in the fixer. So both of them hand in hand, you know, had a hand with solarization. So I had followed her work as well. But I knew, you know, so I knew her in context of being a model and then as being a photographer. But I didn't quite know the extent of her experience in the war. So it was interesting that later on, so Kate had bought a table um, that was owned by Lee Miller in Cornwall in the UK. And she called me up and she said, you know, I just bought this table, which was owned by Lee Miller. And we both knew about Lee Miller because we both had a book that was about Lee Miller. And, you know, we marveled about, oh my gosh, you know, like who would have sat at that table? You know, Picasso, Man Ray, Paul Eluard, you know, all the surrealists who were of the day because they all hung out together. And then I didn't think about it for a number of years, but unbeknownst to me, Kate was in the process of developing the film. It's because she had said, why was there not a film made about Lee Miller? And so she went on the big dive to go and contact Anthony Penrose and find out what was what it was about this this person. But what I found really interesting about Kate is that she has a lot of similarities to Lee Miller, the person. So when I, you know, discovered more about Lee later on, when Kate called me in 2018 and she says, I have a script that I've been working on about Lee Miller. And I know you've been directing television. You know, I was doing Ozark and Umbrella Academy here in Toronto. Um, she said, would you be interested in taking a look at the script to direct? You know, and Kate is somebody who's very supportive of women, you know, wants to give them opportunity. And so for me, it was an opportunity to be able to do a feature film, which for women is much harder to get financing. And, you know, it's another world. So I was very excited and I started going into Lee Miller and read the, the Lives of Lee Miller, which was written by Anthony Penrose, her son, and then also Lee Miller's War. And these are books that were very much based on Lee's writing. Tony is an excellent writer himself. And I, you know, it's amazing to hear her words and to see her as a completely, you know, uh, in a completely different profession, such as, you know, a woman diving into war. And I know how that feels because I was one of the first cinematographers who became known, but also uh, I was one of the few women out there and I had a camera in El Salvador and I remember what it's like being in the middle of a battle and you know being shot at. And um, so but what struck me about Lee is, you know, and I think Kate felt this too, is that 
you know, Lee was very much about justice and, and also very much um, about, you know, showing women when you, you know, women were invisible at the time during the war effort. And she was really intent on showing what women were doing. And Kate is very much the same way, but his characters, you know, they both have this verve and this fierceness and, you know, this high intelligence and, and desire to do, you know, justice in the world. And so that kind of coalesced. So when she asked me to do, to direct the film, you know, I, I thought there's so much potential here. There's so much potential to talk about character and also to have the bigger picture in mind about how this film could be contemporary mm -hmm. for us, for today's audience, even though it takes place in the past. Um, and Lee is very much a contemporary figure. I mean, she had this uncanny ability to be able to see the bigger picture and, and in a way that, you know, really resonates for us today. Well, and you talked there about um, how, as a woman, she was actually shining the light on women, too, the, the atrocities of the war, of course, but also on elements that people weren't thinking of. Audrey, I think, says at one point, uh, Withers, that, right. that she captures things that men wouldn't think to capture, um, which I think is integral to the, the, there's so much of women's history that's kind of lost for that reason that, as you say, that they kind of, the women's war effort was kind of being ignored. Nobody was, was looking at it in that way. It, well, I thought that was a really important aspect of Lee's work. It's the fact that she chose to, you know, point her camera in a different direction. So instead of looking at all the bloody battles, you know, and all the men who are getting killed, you know, who are able to be in combat, she, you know, she turns to see the women who were invisible, you know, who were part of, a real part of the war effort, mm -hmm. but who were not seen, were not heard. And in a way, she was making them part of history. Because as we know, history is those who write it, you know? So, and as we see today, that's being subverted. And Lee understood that, I think innately, that she needed to witness this, document this, show us. And also because she was doing it for Vogue magazine, and the fact that she and Audrey Withers um, had this mission to speak to women, to show women who are reading a fashion magazine what was going on in the war. And, and that I found really unusual and so interesting because as the pilot says in the film, the woman pilot who's not allowed to fly into combat but who's able to ferry bombers from base to base within the UK, you know, she says, it's really important. You're letting us know what's going on with each other in the war. And, and that was a, a radical thing at the time for Audrey Withers as an editor to do, is to show war in a fashion magazine. Well, and you meticulously recreate some of the photos that she took, and you had access to the archive, I believe, to go through a lot of those. What was the most challenging part of that recreation, or was there one photo that kind of was the most difficult to, to recreate in that way? Well, you know, part of making a film is about, you know, the resources that you have at hand and trying to think about how do you approach some, this idea that's on the page and approach it in a way that is not literal. And I've never, me and my work, I've never been literal in my approach. I've always thought about, you know, how can you tell this story in a way that will have an emotional impact? You know, how can it be more of a metaphor for what you're trying to say. So when we were talking about the photographs, the question was, do we try to reproduce them exactly and have Lee walk into those situations? And Kate and I talked about it and we realized that it's really in the spirit of the truth that we you know, recreated these situations so that when, um, and making it as close as we could to the photographs so that if people do go to the photographs, they're not questioning the veracity of it but they're, they're more led into the moment so that we're creating the situation into which, you know, Lee and Kate as the character Lee, you know, walks into here and is able to interact with what's happening. So a great example of that is when they're in Leipzig and we see that there's a room full of the suicide family, which is, 
you know, the commander, and he has his wife and his daughter. It's a young daughter who happens to be a nurse, and they all took cyanide. So they were dead. And Lee was when Davy Sherman, her cohort during the war, who was he was actually working for Life, and she was working for Vogue, and they went together, and they had this great, you know, friendship and relationship going through the war. And they arrived to this um, office, you know, in war-torn Germany, where they, you know, the the Nazis had committed suicide, and so we recreate that scenario, but what we were really looking for was the feeling of it coming through her eyes, as opposed to yes. necessarily focusing. On and also it. importantly, you know, to try and capture that moment where you're confronted with as a photographer, death. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a dead body in front of you, you know, how do you depict that? How do you show that? And you can see that Lee had a great compassion for her subjects, you know, whoever they were. You know, she's looking at them in a way that's where she's looking at the bigger picture. Well, and you spent so much time with Lee's story, both kind of leading up to directing it, but then also directing it. What do you think you learned from Lee? and her story while you were making the movie? I learned that being fierce and not worrying about convention is really important aspect of getting your message out there, even more so. I mean, I've sort of always quietly done that in my little nook of the woods, you know, behind the camera, but, you know, stepping out in front of the camera and or from be, I mean, always behind the camera theoretically because when you're a director you're still overseeing the bigger picture but you know I think for me um, you know it's, it's it's having that commitment and passion you know to be able to get that message out there that's great thank you so much I really appreciate your time today I hope that's the way it goes thank you for like jumping in not a problem and I was I really enjoyed the movie thank you it was amazing I really thank you well I'm happy to be here in Canada I have close ties to Canada thank you